Hi, my name is Adam, and I'm here to demonstrate how to use AirFader to remotely control a Yamaha LS9 digital console wirelessly using this tablet PC. Now this here is the home screen of AirFader, home screen of AirFader, and uh, as you can see it's got layers just like a digital console does. You've got 1 through 8, 9 through 16, 17 through 24. I've already reset the board to the initial data, uh, so we're starting from a blank slate. And then I changed the rack, and we'll get into that in just a minute, so that we've got a 31 band EQ on the left and right stereo mains, and then uh, 15 band graphics on mix one, two, three, and four. So otherwise, starting from a blank slate. So let's jump right into it. Um, I got a microphone in front of me here, and that happens to be channel number 10. So we click on 10, and that opens the channel view screen. Uh, the channel view has three tabs on it. It's basically many of the same things that are on the console itself, uh, but divided up. The main screen has your parameters like your head amp, your pan, your uh, dynamics, uh, parametrics, scratch that, parametrics are on EQ tab right here. Uh, you've got your high, high mid, low mid, and low bands, as well as high pass filter, things like that. We'll get into that a little bit later, as well as the sense. All right, well, the first thing we're gonna need to do is set up the head amp on the channel. And so we do that from the main tab of the channel view. And how these knobs work, obviously being a touchscreen, we can't do a twisting action. It just doesn't really work. So another option would be to click and drag like you do with a mouse on some knobs. But the problem with the touchscreen is that if you're clicking and you're dragging, if you hit an imperfection in the screen or you get bumped or maybe there's a vibration going on in the room that you're doing sound, um, you're gonna drop that knob, you're gonna pick up another knob and pretty soon you're messing with parameters you didn't want to be messing with. So, what we did instead was we implemented a parameter fader at the very bottom of the screen. So if I pick out the head amp here, then you've got this knob, or this fader down at the bottom. As I change that fader, it changes the head amp parameter. And that's how all the knobs work, really anywhere in air fader. So, uh, let's get started with the head amp here. So, check, check. Looks a little bit low. Check, 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 check. Yeah, a little bit more. Now you see what I just did there? There's actually three different ways to control the fader. Uh, you can drag it left and right, uh, just like a normal fader. But you can also tap outside of the fader track. Like if I pack, tap, tap, bleh, tap to the right, it's going to go up a couple. If I tap to the left, it's going to go down. That makes sense. There's actually a third option as well, what we call a fine mode. And this works for any of the faders, the horizontal faders, the vertical faders. When I kick on fine mode, Instead of just dragging left to right, it actually divides my movements by five, which means I can do much finer grain control. Because most of the time, you're not dragging all the way across the screen. You want to make little changes to faders. So how this works in fine mode, I've got it selected. When my finger moves a little bit, scratch that, when my finger moves halfway across the screen, the fader moves one-fifth of that distance. So as you can see, if I want to make just a couple dB changes, I can really get some fine, you know, fine grain control on that. So, those are the three different ways to control any fader and air fader. Let's reset that back to 32. Check, check. And that's a good starting point for the head amp. Um, I don't need anything else on here. I don't need phantom power. I don't need phase. We're going to leave it on center pan. So let's go to EQ. And this is the parametric EQ for the channel, obviously. Um, being a vocal, I'm going to turn on the high pass. I'm going to pass that at something more comfortable, like 140. Looks good. I could obviously do a lot more parameters. You can actually click and drag right on the screen. You can use the faders below. They're parameter faders just like on the previous. You've got your gain, you've got your cue, and you've got your frequency to pick out. But I'm actually going to flatten that, turn the high pass back on, and we're just going to roll with that for now because primarily what we're doing right now is ringing out a monitor. So let's bring that up now in the monitor, and this happens to be mix three. Check, 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 and I'm already starting to get a signal. That's a good sign. But before I move on any further, that's confusing mix three. I'm not going to be able to remember which one that is because uh, that's the, what is that, stage right? I always get those confused. Uh, stage right, let's label that. If we pick up, go to the master layer and pick up mix three, we can actually label that. Just click on the name and let's clear this out. Let's make it big. Ah, there we go. And let's see here, we're actually giving Mix 3 a name, so let's call it C-E-N-T-E-R for center wedge, because I'm not going to remember stage right, apparently. <laughs> it's arbitrary. And we close this out, 
And as you can see now, under mix three, you've actually got the label center right there, and so that stays there. But that also carries through, because if you notice on when we get into the rack, my graphic 4A is the uh, now labeled center. So once you've got all of your mixes, let's say you've got eight monitor mixes going on here, and you've got eight GEQs in your rack, they're all going to have like ears, things like that. They're all going to have names. So that is what we're going to do right now. So let's go back to, I shouldn't say go back, let's pull up uh, Sends on Faders once and show that off. Um, I just click on Sends on Faders at the very top, and I'm going to pick out Mix 3 right here, and this is Channel 10 coming up. Check, 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 check right there. So we're going to get it. That's exactly what I want to have happen. So we got a little bit of ring in there. So let's pick up the rack, go into the center, and see if we can find that. Now, let me step away. Um, this is the 15 band graphic on Yamaha, which means you've got all 31 bands available, but you can only change 15 at any one time. And so at the very top of the screen, it's going to tell you how many bands you have available. Again, just like on the console. So we've got, uh, let's test my ability to pick out, that's probably about, uh, probably lower than that. Check, 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 check. Lower than that, about 500 must be. So check, check one, two. Check, check. That's already cleaner. Check, 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 check. I feel like there's something higher in there. Check, check. I don't know, I'm not a monitor guy. But, as you can hear, it's already getting cleaner. And the point is, if you really knew what you were doing, you could really design a badass EQ out of this thing. So, anyway, that briefly demonstrates how to change, how to ring out monitors. Really covered a lot of stuff there. We covered how to set up the head amp on a channel uh, using the touchscreen and touch knobs right on the channel view right there. Uh, we covered the parametric EQ on a channel. We can also name the channel. I forgot about that. Channel 10 doesn't make sense. I think this is Bobby's mic, so let's clear that out. B O B B I, save, there's the channel name, that shows up in the channel view, in sends on faders mode, we've got different mixes, and finally we covered the rack for the center, so that's pretty much it for bringing out a monitor, stay tuned, we'll probably have some more videos up pretty shortly, but thanks for checking out Airfader, check us out on the web at airfader.com.